Welcome to this message of encouragement. Today I wanted to talk about the many false gospels that are out in the world being taught today. But before I get started, I always like to ask those of you who are watching to please pray for other people. Remember those that are having sickness, financial uh, struggles, uh, those that have lost a loved one really need to be lifted up to God also. Uh, please pray for our nation's leaders. Uh, in 2 Timothy, we are told to pray for other people, to pray for our nation's leaders and those that are in positions of authority. So I'm asking you to please remember to pray for other people, for it is only God that can bring about that great change that you are wanting to see in this world. Today I wanted to talk about the many false gospels that are being taught uh, out in our churches today. I know most people are, are not familiar with these. Some people that will be watching these videos are in these types of churches. And, and I want to encourage you that if you are in these types of churches that are teaching false doctrine, I want to encourage you to get into a good Bible-based teaching church. Uh, and, you know, to get away from any type of false doctrine. Now, when I say false doctrine, I'm not talking about maybe uh, a preacher that makes a mistake, uh, maybe misinterprets, you know, one thing, one or two things. I'm talking about false doctrine just literally being taught to the people. Uh, they call a lot, some of this uh, false doctrine just ear tickling. So, uh, in, in Galatians chapter 1, you know, Paul warns us about these false gospels. He says, the real gospel, the real gospel of Jesus Christ, is based on Christ alone. Not us, doesn't have anything you know, to do with us. It's based on Christ alone, faith alone, grace alone, and is found in Scripture alone, and is for the glory of God alone. And when I say, well, it, it's not, you know, about us, you know, there, I'm going to read through some of these Gospels, and it's all about me, 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 I, 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 I. It's nothing about glorifying God, uh, uh, coming to Jesus for every care. It's all about, you know, what, what the Lord can do for me, 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 me. So the very first false teaching of the Gospel is called, the prosperity gospel. Now that is uh, very popular in the churches, especially the larger churches. And it's very popular in the TV ministries. Uh, I don't want to mention any names because I don't want my videos, you know, to get kicked off of the internet. So I do have to watch what I say because I do want to get the Word of God out there. But I don't want to have my videos kicked or, or myself kicked off, uh, you know, offline because if I am, I can't be a witness for Christ. So I have to watch, you know, what I say not only about the gospel but also uh, about about our leaders and, and other people within in the world. So the prosperity gospel uh, leads people uh, coming to God for what you know God can give them. The prosperity gospel claims that if you trust in Jesus, pray the sinner's prayer, or do some act of faith that the preacher is prescribing from the pulpit, you will be blessed on this earth and in this lifetime with material blessings and health you, you never could have dreamed of before. It says, with the prosperity gospel, you do not have to wait for your eternal rewards. You can have the best life now. And that's what people's being taught. You can have that best life right now. Well, trust me, there is nothing on this earth, no type of job promotion, financial gain, uh, anything. There's nothing on this earth that can make you have your best life now. We're told in the Bible to keep our eyes and focus on God and upon heaven and that heavenly reward. The rewards that we're going to get in heaven far greater outweigh what you think would be the, your best in this lost and dying world. So don't be confused. The prosperity gospel preachers always say, do you want a hundredfold return on your money? No, you've all heard this. Then give to this ministry and let God multiply it back to you. No bank in the world offers this kind of return. And this, friends, this is a false teaching right here. God has not promised this in the Bible. He has not made any type of promise like this to you. This is false teaching. 
Another example is Christians treating God like he, he's a genie, a magical genie. You know, make a wish and God will do it. Yes, the Bible promises that, that God will bless believers immensely. He will bless us, but the main blessing of the true gospel is a restored relationship with God through Jesus Christ for God's glory, not our earthly comforts. The true promised reward of the true gospel is God himself with you in triumphs and trials. So I hope that you're, you know, you're listening to me of how, you know, this is all about God and our relationship with God. It's not about, you know, what he's going to do for us and, you know, we rub a little, you know, genie's head and make a, make a wish or speak the wish three times and it'll come true. Uh, yes, God does say if we ask, we shall receive, but it goes on to mean a little bit more th than that. We have to live the Word of God and obey the Word of God, have forgiveness in our hearts and things like that. We just don't say, I want this, I want that, and immediately, poof, He just gives it to you. It doesn't work that way, and that is false teaching. The second type of false teaching is the poverty gospel. This type of gospel is the opposite of the prosperity gospel in that trials, persecution, and pain are emphasized from the pulpit. This type of false teaching basically demonizes material blessings, earthly success, and anything that might tempt someone into worldliness. Uh, nuns, for example, uh, are known to take the vow of poverty. And this is a, a false teaching. God has never asked anybody to live in, in poverty and be poverty stricken. The sacrificial nature of this teaching makes it seem true, but God does not demand his saints to take a vow of poverty, as I was just saying. Common verses taken out of context include those like Mark 10, where Jesus says to the, to the rich, young, uh, rich young man who was asking him how he can inherit eternal life, Jesus says, one thing you lack. He said, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have here treasures in heaven. Then he says, come and follow me. Well, at this the man's face, you know, failed. He became just grieved, uh, and he went away very sad because he had a great amount of wealth, and he had that love of money, that love of money. Jesus said to his disciples, you know, he goes on to say, you know, how hard is it for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven? The poverty gospel preacher ne neglects the context of such verses, missing the fact that Jesus said this to a specific person who had, like I said, that love of money. Jesus was talking to one specific person about, you know, giving up their riches, not, you know, a community or, you know, or, or different groups of people as a whole. God could tell any one of us the same thing that he had told the rich young man. All should be willing to answer to such a call, but God does not ask this of us. While the Bible constantly warns us not to idolize money, it also tells us to enjoy all the blessings that God has given us. We are told to be generous, but not giving so much that we end up in poverty ourselves. That is just not biblical. The true gospel is not based on how much you can give up for God, but rather how much he gave up for us on the cross. Another false gospel that is found in the church throughout the churches today is the God is love only gospel. In this false gospel, the preacher emphasizes unconditional love of God, the endless grace of God and the always forgiving Father. In their proper context, truths like these are absolutely biblical. They are. They're biblical. But preaching one truth at the expense of another always leads to heresy. If you only talk about the love of God but you never preach about, here we go, holiness, justice, or the wrath of God, this is what they fail to preach. He said, you are presenting an incomplete pre picture of the Lord. And that's what many of the preachers are doing. They are uh, presenting an incomplete picture of the Lord. And, and most Christians 
they don't even read their Bibles today, so they don't know, so they are being misled. A church in a false, God is love only gospel will say that correcting others, church discipline, and rule following are unacceptable. It's not acceptable. Acceptance, come as you are, and diversity are buzzwords used to shame anyone with a more conservative view, claiming that if you preach anything but the love of God, you are clearly not accepting or showing diversity to others. While the true gospel preacher emphasizes the love of God, he will be sure to express that love in context. God does not love us so much that he overlooks sin, accepts us no matter, uh, uh, no matter you know, how we behave, meaning, you know, he doesn't you know, always approve of our behavior. He doesn't approve of our sin no matter what. And will thus always be happy with us no matter what we do. So, you know, that's not true. The Bible says it's not. God does, you know, uh, look down upon us when we sin. He doesn't want us to do that. He loves us so much that he paid for our sins himself. God always loves people no matter what we do because he is love. But he expresses that love in many different ways, including discipline, consequences, and trials meant to break, break us so we will, you know, turn to him. Hell is real and people really are punished for their sin if they are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. The fourth false gospel teaching is the suffer for success gospel. The false gospel finds found creeping into many church today is similar to the prosperity gospel in that rewards are not rooted in grace but in a person's act of faith. The suffer for success gospel claims that if you work hard for Christ, don't turn away from him in trials and put up with a dark world that is constantly trying to persecute you, then you will be exalted in God's eyes and be given spiritual power and ministry success. Suffering for Jesus is martyr. Nothing will come easy, but if you really seek God really hard, your name will definitely be remembered in the Christian history books. I don't know where they get some of these, but I wanted to you know, let you know these, are, these false teachings are out there, and some of them are kind of funny. Common verses taken out of context include Paul suffering uh, in 2 Corinthians, Daniel in the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fire, and other stories of suffering that resulted in miraculous deliverance. While following Jesus will cost us dearly, you know, we're warned, you know, we will, you know, our, this is going to cost us to follow Jesus. It's not going to be easy. Suffering is not meant, to, not a means to personal success. God blesses people with power through His grace. No one deserves that power or that success. The fifth false teaching gospel is the Christless cult gospel, where we take Christ completely out. Cults are religious groups who twist the truth about Jesus Christ. Sadly, many cults claim to be Christians, but they are not true Christians. They are not true Christians because their beliefs and their teachings about Jesus Christ are wrong. Christless churches often have an emphasis on reaching your full potential. Being your best that you can be, and Jesus is our example. Any church that teaches Jesus is not fully God and fully man, sent from heaven to die on the cross for our sins, raised from the grave on the third day, and ascended into heaven is not a true church, and is led by a false prophet teaching a false gospel, and we, we see this in many churches, and especially in a lot of TV ministries. They will, uh, I've heard several say, uh, you know, Jesus, you know, wasn't God. He was just merely a man, and they're teaching that today, not only in the churches, but also uh, in the TV ministries. The sixth false teaching is the liberal gospel. The liberal gospel, and that's in so many churches today, 
we don't need theology. They're saying anything to do with theology, uh, trying to obey any type of, you know, doctrine, uh, you know, certain types of, you know, rules and regulations that Christians need to be following that are related to, you know, the Ten Commandments to in, in trying to keep the people holy and, and righteous and, and on the path, you know, the right path. Um, you know, they... they they want to turn away from theology. They want to say all we need is love, love, love for the people. Just love all the people. And they are driven by the, the, by the idea to help the needy and the outcast. Yes, they are trying to be the servants of the Lord, to be like Jesus as a servant, but they are missing the, the theology. And you can't take any parts of, of God's Word out, uh, no matter what it is. Because there's a lot of you know misinterpretation, especially the preachers that don't want to look at the theology or the background of some of the scriptures. Uh, the seventh false teaching and the last is, of course, they call it the legalistic gospel, uh, where you fall into the do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that, rules and regulations for salvation and spiritual growth. And we know that people have gotten caught up into that. But also, sadly, a lot of the people that, that are now, that are not liberal, that are not, not any type of Gnostic, that are not following the prosperity gospel uh, and some of these other false teachings, we are becoming and, and to be called legalistic, which, which we're not. Followers of God, like I say, God is holy, He is sovereign, He is righteous. And, you know, we try to... To be like Jesus, that's the way Jesus was, and and we obey the word of God, and by obeying the word of God, and you know conducting ourselves, you know, by not sinning, and you know trying not to lie, cheat, steal, covet, you know we're being called legalistics for that because we're just not ripping and roaring and doing anything and everything we want, and at the end of the day, you know, God, please forgive me for all the bad things I did today. Well, you can't live your life like that. You're not supposed to be living the life as a sinner. If people that, if they were reading the Bible, they would read that, that once we're saved, we don't continue to go out and sin, 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 and then run home at the end of the day and just beg for forgiveness and just do it all again, you know, tomorrow. That, 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 that's not being a true Christian. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, lesson on false teaching. Uh, I hope that it has been encouraging to you. Uh, like I said, I ask if you are in some type of false teaching within your church to find a good Bible-based church. Because living in these end of times, we don't want to be misled. And that's what Jesus warned us of is being misled by, you know, these deceivers that they've been in the world since the beginning of time. They will be with us all the way up to the end because uh, the devil's role is to, or his main goal is to lead God's people away from God. God bless. Stay safe.